In our last video, we talked about the different general properties of studies, which I've written in here. Experimental versus observational studies, talking about directionality, whether they're forwards or backwards, and their timing, whether it's a prospective or a retrospective study. In this video, we're going to be talking about two specific types of studies, which I've written in here. One, cohort studies, and two, case control studies. And we'll be discussing what they are, their pros and cons, and which characteristics of studies we've talked about in last videos each of them retains. So the first one we're going to be looking at is the cohort study. Now in a cohort study, we're going to start with a population of disease-free individuals, and we're going to follow them over time to find out the risk of a specific outcome occurring. So let's go ahead and get a timeline here down on the page. And we'll put down here on the right-hand side a little line, and we'll mark that disease. So this will be the specific outcome that we're looking for. And towards the left here, we'll say exposure. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with people who either have or who don't have an exposure, and we'll track them over time to see whether or not they develop this disease. So let's go ahead and look at an example to make this a little bit more clear. So let's say we start with two groups of people, these blue individuals here who have a certain exposure. So let's say that these individuals were exposed to asbestos. And let's say these individuals on the bottom here haven't been exposed to asbestos. So we have two groups of people, one with an exposure and one without. And we're going to track the members of each population to see how many of them develop a specific disease. So let's say mesothelioma, or a particular type of lung cancer that's associated with asbestos exposure, versus those individuals who don't. So we'll say in the asbestos exposed population, how many don't develop mesothelioma and how many do. And in the non-asbestos exposed population, how many develop mesothelioma and how many don't. And by comparing the proportions of each group of how many do and how many don't develop mesothelioma, we can have an idea of what type of risk factor the presence of asbestos exposure is. Now there's one thing that slightly complicates cohort studies, and that's that they can either be prospective or retrospective. So remember we said prospective versus retrospective has to do with whether or not the study starts before the outcome is known. So the more classic type of cohort study starts here. So I'll draw this orange person, which denotes the experimenter, starting before the outcome is known and following them over time. So because this starts before the outcome is known, this would be a prospective study. But it's also possible to have a retrospective study, which would mean that it starts after the exposure is known, but it has forward directionality because the exposure status is known before the outcome. So in this case, you might be looking back over company records and knowing who ultimately developed a specific outcome, but you're going to start by knowing their exposure status, which makes this a retrospective study. So in terms of our original study characteristics, we know this is an observational study because there's no randomization. It's always going to be in the forward direction or have forward directionality because the exposure status is going to be known before the outcome status is. And we've said already that we, it could either be prospective or have retrospective timing, depending on the individual parameters of the specific study in question. The last thing to say about cohort studies is that they have some specific advantages and disadvantages. On the pro side, you can definitely tell causality, because exposure precedes disease. And you can also study multiple diseases at once and see which specific exposures lead to what diseases. On the other hand, there are some bad things or some disadvantages. Uh, prospective studies generally last a long time, and so they can be costly and have lots and lots of time costs associated with them. And so they're inefficient for rare diseases or ones that take a long time to develop. They also are specifically prone to lots of loss to follow-up bias, which means that since you're following these people over time, you're more likely to lose track of them or have them drop out of the study for whatever reason, which would affect your results. The last type of study we're going to look at is the so-called case control study. So this type of study is really just the reverse of a cohort study. In case control studies, we'll start with the disease population, the cases, and we'll compare them against a group of controls, which don't have a disease. And we'll look back in both groups to see if we can determine what was different in the case population or what exposure they had that was different from the control population that may have led to the specific disease in question. So the first thing we're going to do, like we did in the cohort studies, is we're going to start with a timeline. And we'll mark down on the right-hand side, we'll say some disease. This will be our outcome. 
and on the left hand side we'll mark some exposure and this is what we're going to be looking for. So let's say in this example we're interested in coronary heart disease. So we'll say these yellow patients have coronary heart disease and we'll say in pink these individuals do not. So we'll just draw CHD with a line through it. And we're particularly interested in the relationship between smoking cigarettes as a risk factor for this disease. So what we'll do is we'll compare people who have coronary heart disease and see what proportion of them had this exposure versus what proportion of them didn't. And we'll just put a no, denoting no cigarettes. And we'll do the same for the population who doesn't have coronary heart disease. So we'll say how many people don't have the exposure of smoking cigarettes versus how many do. And by comparing within the diseased and non-diseased population how many smoked and how many didn't, we can get an idea of what kind of a risk factor smoking is for this particular disease, coronary heart disease. So in terms of the parameters from the first video, we know it's observational because there's no randomization on the part of the experimenter. We know it's going to be in the backwards directionality because the outcome is determined before the exposure status, or we know the outcome rather before the exposure status. And it's going to be retrospective because the study starts once the disease is known already. So to symbolize that, we'll just draw our little experimenter man right here and say that he looks back after the outcome status is known and looks back towards the exposure to see if he could find out what type of exposure there was that may have caused this specific disease. In terms of the pros and cons of case control studies, you can analyze a lot of different exposures, which makes this really powerful when you're looking back. You also don't need a huge sample size because you're starting with people who either have the disease or who don't. On the other hand, you're dealing with a specific type of bias called a recall bias, which means that because you're relying on people's memories, there's bound to be some errors and some mistakes that people make. You're also limited because you can only deal with only one disease at a time, and it's definitively tough to determine causality because it's tough to say whether or not this specific exposure caused for sure this specific disease. So all you can really say is the presence of a specific exposure is a risk factor for a specific disease.